Hi, my name is Muffy Faith, and I'm here to welcome you to my garden. Um, a little bit about myself. I'm Muffy Mitchell Faith. I'm from Columbia, South Carolina. And um, I found this property 22 years ago, or it found me. And I'm pretty sure it found me. Um, I started working on the garden, and like anything, um, it's a learning process. Gardens can teach you more than anything about yourself, about what you should plant, what you shouldn't plant, um, how just tons of stuff about the garden it just it's just amazing and I brought my mother here and um, the first thing she said is large bunches of things that you are certain will work and of course I wasn't going to have any of that here I have all this property I'm going to have roses and I'm going to have this and that and finally here I am I want large bunches of this it you know I had to work that out myself but um, it's always good when you have a garden if you have a good friend in the garden and you have garden people who who get you who you can speak garden with and they love you and here is one of them that loves me and I love her Beth McGinty and Beth McGinty is one of my favorite people in the whole world and she and I have worked our way through this garden of what works and what doesn't work and do we have salt and oh my gosh we have boron and what are we going to do about this and what are we going to do about that and she'll get it one way and I'll come behind her and move it it's just been such a fun friendship and um, everybody deserves a great friend like Beth in the garden. So women of a certain age, they forget things. And um, I forget things. And so if I forget the exact plant, you'll see me say, hey, Beth, what was that one? Because she remembers it all, which is wonderful. Um, by trade, I'm a designer. I've been a designer all my life. I just didn't know you could actually make money doing that. Um, Everybody that knows me knows that I'm, a, um, I'm the baby of eight children in the family. So I'm number eight and um, I'm named Muffy because I was named Little Miss Muffet by the nurse, which is not legal. I'm Elizabeth Stewart and I was Elizabeth Stewart Mitchell and um, Muffy stuck. It was cute until I was 12, but if you're looking for a discount in my store, Elizabeth Stewart, you need to use Muffy, not Elizabeth, because then they know you don't know me. Um, but anyway, that's a sidebar. Everybody that knows me calls it like a squirrel moment. There's a squirrel moment. But what you'll find is in my gardens, um, in every garden that I design and work on and help people do and mine, it means something to me. Every stinking thing in here means something to me. Um, there's nothing to me more intimate than a garden. And so I'm really looking forward to showing you mine and all the reasons why. But one thing you're gonna see repetitively is purple. It's one of my favorite colors. I'm sure that Beth is sick of it, but she knows now purples and whites and lavenders and yellow is my least favorite color unless it's a certain type of yellow. Designers just have those idiosyncrasies. Um, and, uh, and then the whole why of why I love the garden is so special. I was raised, like I said, in Columbia and my father um, loved the garden and so did my mother. And on Saturdays, it was mandatory that you worked in the garden. It was non-negotiable. And people knew not to spend the night at my house on Friday because Saturday you'd be working in our garden. And um, I had wheelbarrow duty. Now, I'm just here to tell you that that's not fun. When my dad's favorite thing was to lean down and he'd throw it over his head. And then it was my job to go pick all that up. And why couldn't he put it in a pile? And it wasn't little deadheading, it was big stuff. So I had to take the wheelbarrow down and bring it back, wah, wah. So sometimes when I'm in the garden and I'm working, I just do that for dad. And then I go pick it up myself. Um, but anyway, so I have this wonderful piece about the garden and there's all sorts of things. I can tell you that this is one of my all-time favorites. It brings in butterflies. Beth, what is this? This is Mystic Spire Salvia. And I love things that are a wink. I love that, you know, I have that blue and a different shade of blue. And then we go into pink and then another blue. I have a house in Austin, Texas, and I can't wait to show that. Um, but I, in my mind, as a design person, I love art. And so I thought, you know what? I'm gonna create a blue on blue garden, like you would a blue on blue painting. And it's all the different hues of just blue. It is so good. It's just so fun to walk through there. 
And then if you come over here, you know, lavender, which Beth says there's only really one kind in all of Charleston that works. So I sell that at my store, which here's the plug for that. I have a store, it's called Elizabeth Stewart and it's on Coleman Boulevard. And we just expanded into the garden, which honestly, I'm shocked that I, it took me so long. It used to be a garden store, but it's so much fun bringing the unusual and things that are beautiful and just seeing people happy in the garden, especially now, especially now. Um, get in the garden, it's healing. So these are, this is a raised bed. It started out with the same shape, but it was on the ground. And then over time I said, gosh, wouldn't it be great if you could raise it? And then we designed it and got this sort of situated. And um, Beth helps me with this raised part, which I just adore. And then, you know, I have the bamboo. It was always there. People who know the property say, I used to play in that bamboo. Well, I love the bamboo and you want to get on my bad side, touch it. Just, you know, try to cut back my bamboo because it sounds good. It moves. It's just beautiful. Um, and that's the normal bamboo that everybody says don't buy because it spreads. But for me, it's okay to spread there. I enjoy it. So I think it's important that like I touched on and said that everything that I um, do in the garden means something to me. There are all sorts of pieces in the garden that are really important to me. Because like I mentioned, I think you work things out in the garden. I think that you can, the garden will absorb your pain. The garden will absorb your happiness. There's just so much when you need to be grounded, it's the best place to be in my opinion. And so um, I'll tell you some of the things that worked and some of the things that didn't. And just because I think it's real important to be real, I'll share a little bit of what I did um, and how it helped heal me and make things better for me. So when I found this property, um, I was living in Texas and I missed home so much. I'm a South Carolina girl. I mean, I'm mama's girl and I'm the baby. And I had three children under the age, they were born 94, 96, 98. So I was busy and I had my business. So I wanted to be surrounded by family. And um, I came to look at this just thinking it was three bedrooms across, no bathrooms, no closets. Um, it was a wreck. And I think he's gonna show you some pictures of what it looked like actually when I found it. Um, and one of the things that I have, I sort of laugh with people and tell them that I have um, X-ray vision that I see in 3D. I can't do your, don't ask me about a math problem. Don't ask me to do your taxes or anything remote. Don't even ask me to add. Um, but I have that gift and so as I saw it I could see it I could just see how this works um, now I couldn't translate that perfect because even Moby Marks helped me with this Richard Marks construction but at one point I'm, I'm out there and I'm swinging my hands around at a place on the other side you'll see and I was like no the angle needs to be like this you know if you're gonna lie down and be able to see the stars and you know Middleton and blah blah he's like could we please get Sheila Watermer could we please get a landscape person and Sheila Watermer, the whippersnapper that she is, click, 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 she's like singing out all that math and you could just see the relief from the guy on the backhoe, like thank God for Sheila Watermer. And we became friends too and started working all this out um, together because it takes a team and Bo Clowney and just, it's just been a wonderful experience all the way through. But when you look at this, um, you have what used to be one of the Civil War hospitals and so it's gothic revival and it isn't about the house but it is about the house because a garden if you're going to have it in the front of your home you need to have it relatable it needs to relate it needs to honor that is sort of how i feel and so to come in here and just drop miami outside of the, we that would just be heinous it's really important to have it speak the language now i'm all in full right brain speak the language of what it deserves so um, I just recently put these boxwoods in because I, you can't teach me anything. I try everything at least once or twice, but um, I put the boxwoods in because I'm a firm believer that um, boxwoods, especially in Europe, you can learn this and see this, they will hold chaos very well. So you can have a lot going on as long as you have some sort of a structure. And boxwoods are a perfect way to keep a lot going on at bay. This is in transition because it's been hot and we've had COVID and golly day, it's just been a lot going on. So don't judge me for the front because it's not finished. But I'm sure every gardener will tell you that. If they don't tell you that, they probably didn't do that garden themselves because it is a constant process. Um, so Gothic Revival comes up nice and high. When I found this, these magnolias were here in full bloom like they are now. 
we have had the biggest to do here because my well has um, boron in it. And boron was really hurting my magnolias. And to me, they are the queens of the property. I went ballistic because when I was going back and forth from Texas and it was under construction, some put it in quotes, nice person decided that the skirts on these beautiful magnolias needed to be cut up. And when I came back, they had cut all the skirts of the magnolias. I had a carnary. You can't get it back, it doesn't grow back. And so I wanted at all cost to save these and have them so they're all got nice new blooms out and and it's going to be fantastic but that right there is insane it's so beautiful and um and then in the the other thing that's hard about a garden that you learn over time is that um oops i just messed with your thing the is that it's movable if i'm designing a design project and i'm doing a house i can design it i can layer it i can have texture i can have feeling i can do all these crazy good things and it stays a garden doesn't stay so you have to have the forethought to think it looks really good and then it needs to look good moving forward to me the magnolias are art in themselves and one of the things that i really like to do and Beth can tell you that, is that I'll always do a sort of a wink of some sort. Um, and I love art. And so as a collector, because I am always shopping and buying for the store and I travel a lot, I always find something that has to come home to me. So I found this um, sculpture and I enjoy putting it in the garden just right there in the canopy of the magnolia quietly, not making a statement, but kind of blending in with the purple and the little peak that's in there. And to me, that's a nice little smile. So this is probably one of the most important spots, I think, in all of the property, is this wonderful live oak. And if you look up, it has the fern, which is called resurrection. the resurrection fern. That's right, thank you, Beth. Um, and this is one of my favorite things because it just comes back in a second when it rains. And it just says everything, the resurrection fern, that it's gonna be okay, that you know, with a little water, it will come back. And you can just do a zillion analogies for that. But I love this big tree. And then my father loved Japanese maples. And so you'll find those all around the property. And you know, I took it for granted growing up. It was just part of my thing. But now I love having my dad in the garden and the hydrangeas, he actually cultivated all of his. I'm not that impressive, but he loved that and then you'll land over there in another really important part for me when i was 14 my best friend died and it was very very tragic and we had that sculpture she had that sculpture in her garden and we threw eggs at it and laughed at it and crawled on it and we were just little girls and now she came up for auction and i ended up buying her and i put her in my garden to dance in with all the hydrangeas and she just means the world to me. So hydrangeas are one of my favorites. You'll see there, there are certain things that are a Southern favorite and a staple. And hydrangeas are one of those for me. And so I have spots around the garden, like you can see behind me, they're not even out. This is how you should always buy your flowers, buy your flowers in bud so that you have future and you have them to have longevity. And so this is a hydrangea walkway that's gonna be insane. It'll be so pretty. We've had salt, they've had trouble, we've tried to save them. I mean, you just, you just do what you do to love the garden. Um, and then it comes on up here and we walk up with the agapanthus and the hydrangeas which need water because they do midday, they like some shade. And then there are all sorts of focal points in the garden. Focal points are really important, give structure and lets everything else be a little more wild. Like the bear's britches, look at that. That's just crazy good. So these are Fuji waterfall hydrangeas. I didn't know that, Beth just told me that. But my mother told me that every white hydrangea you find in the grocery store you should buy because they're amazing. And she loved this one and I loved this one. So every single time I can, I buy them. I think they're magnificent. They look like fireworks when they spread in the sky. And you come through here, these are blueberry trees and I bought them small and look what they did. And what they did is frame what I wanted them to frame, which is, ta-da! You come out 
and see why everybody lives in Charleston in the first place is because it's just such a beautiful town. It's just got beautiful water and everything. So when you look across all of this and you see these hills that the grass is still not all the way back yet, um, from right here where I'm standing, this looked a lot like the shrub out here when we saw it. And this was my loose interpretation of Middleton Gardens because I think that's the most beautiful plantation ever and that they excavated it and brought it back and someone took the time to go through there. And if you've never been there, go in February when the camellias are blooming. It's insane that they're so tall. It's something that you just don't get to see and it's so peaceful and beautiful. So I thought, well, I'll have a little of that. And then we found the critical line. And then once I found the critical line, I wanted a cutting bed. You know, here's the original house and that's new construction. And where these palm trees are was an amazing tree. I built everything around a tree. This is a really important garden piece you need to make sure. If you're new construction, if you're redoing anything, do not build around a water oak. Don't do it because they don't live long and they die from the inside out. And I built my house around water oaks, which promptly died over time, splitting in half, and what do you do? You bring a helicopter with something? You'd still get a, a lollipop, and who in the world would do that anyway? So I called Sheila, what am I gonna do? I've lost my, you know, blah, blah. So we have this now. I'm still mourning that uh, tree. Jennifer Anderson helped me with this fish pond. She doesn't know that. But I read in there that she had this fish pond that she walked across to go into her house. And I thought, oh my God, that's the craziest, best thing ever. So I came up with my rendition of this. And so the fish swim underneath, the lily pads and whatnot aren't in, so it doesn't look very good. So no judgment, but there it is. So you have this fish pond and all lit up at night, you see these koi going back and forth. And then I have yard art I have to put out because it's, you know, we have real birds that come fish at dawn and it's just the fight of the garden. But anyway, it's one of the places I really, really love. And then I design all the porches to live. How would you live on your porch? Do it, have your dinner party, put your silverware out there, put your candelabra out there for the evening, bring your good pillows outside and enjoy how beautiful the garden is while you're on your porch. I think I'm a firm believer of that. Um, I just wish I sat still long enough to actually take my own advice. <laughs> So here's my fish pond. This is my second fish pond. My first one was half round, little no nothing. And I grew the fish nice and long and gorgeous. And then I was like, oh my gosh, they can't even turn around. I need a new fish pond. Great rationalization. Um, I called Sheila Wortimer. I said, this is what I think I want. And she laughs with me. I love it. She's like, you don't need me. You know what you want. And she's my blankie, just like Beth is a blankie. I love to have people who know more than I do to bounce my ideas off. And then I go do what I wanted to in the first place. Um, but anyway, so here's my round fish pond and I love it and I have my fish in here and you have water plants that are amazing. You know, I just learned in Texas that you can put mint in the fish pond and it grows like crazy. And people say, don't buy mint, it spreads. I can't make it spread anywhere I put it, ever. But I can in the fish pond. It's really good in the fish pond. Um, so anyway, so this is one of my favorite places and it has a wonderful light. Moonlighting is the fellow that I adore more than anything and he does great lights and this just is a perfect round spot at night. Again, if I could just sit still, it would be just the right place. And then these are collections of things that I love. I love Old World, I love Charleston, and I really love buying containers and things like that from Europe. Um, so that's what we sort of specialize in, in my, garden, my garden store. And, um, and then things that are simple. And then rosemary, I have rosemary everywhere because rosemary's for remembrance. And I didn't know that except that my sister did my flowers for my wedding and um, she went to my friend's house who had died that I told you about and just cut and cut and cut. And my whole wedding was filled with rosemary for remembrance of her. So now I don't have a garden without rosemary. And I had a great dinner party the other night um, for my daughter who's graduating from college. And this is great. It was just wonderful, do it, because um, it worked. But we took white tablecloths and I took, she's University of Texas, so that was orange candelabra. I did the orange candles in the silver candelabras that were fabulous. I got a flea market store. And 
then I did those um, cherries, not the red cherries, but the ones that are a little bit um, orangish color. And I s smattered them all down the center in with white, um, in with uh, tea lights, and then a little mint so that you could smell it at the table, and then rosemary, and it was so much fun. And at the end of the evening, watching all my guests eating the cherries at the end of the evening, I just, it was really special, and it's so easy, so you should do that. So this is my greenhouse, and it came to be because on this side of the house is morning light, and orchids love it. And I would go to Lowe's, and I'd put them in the windows, and they would rebloom and rebloom. It's ridiculous. I didn't even know they could do that. And so I decided I'd build a greenhouse. And so I got a kit, and I had it sent in, and we built it, and I've really enjoyed it, really, really enjoyed it. Um, it's a great place in the in the winter. It's a great place when it's raining. It's it's a place to turn music up and enjoy just messing with my flowers. And I mean it when I say that I'd rather have flowers than I would have um, food. And I stood in line all the way around the grocery store, and I wasn't getting a thing except flowers during this pandemic because you can tell how I'm doing by my flower cart. Um, Thank God for flower places. They just make life better. So we talked about it at the top of my, um, of the hill here where it kind of undulates down and I said that I was loosely copying Middleton. Um, all of this is fill. So this is all created. Everything behind the camera, everything this way, this was all fill. So they, I did a little forestry. I brought in some big trees. Um, and created this wonderful area. And it's very important that when I do the garden or anybody does a garden, you sort of can think about it like a room. You go into another room, you want, same thing in a retail store, you've successful if they find their way through because it's sort of a surprise. And this is one of my great surprises. So you can see that you're tucked in and you get to come down. And then this is my rendition of Thailand meets Polly's Island. I used to travel in Thailand and I think there's no place in the world that has better green than Thailand and then Polly's Island it doesn't get any better than that either so um, my favorite places so I created this little um, pool house that has a little bit of both and then wonderful Charleston brick and my old world containers and a little Vitex to hit the blue that I love so much you can't beat a ligustrum hedge. So many people don't like them, but they, they serve a purpose and it really does work. And um, then my four pots, all these years, 20 something years, and I still can't find the pots I want here, but um, this works and I love white at a garden and white in a garden, especially with the heat that we have, gives you the feeling of calm and cool. And you can see it at night, which is when because of the heat, we're actually enjoying our gardens so much. So you always want to make sure that you have white in the garden, as well as a night blooming jasmine, which I'm trying to find those for the store. Um, they're hard to find, but if you can find it, buy it. It is not pretty, but at night you will thank me. Um, so anyway, so here it is, and our wonderful little place where the kids learn to swim, and you know the little pool is kind of a little outdated, but. Um, I love it, our quiet little place, and then this wonderful little oasis, and I knew exactly what I wanted it to look like. Watch your head, because I'm only 5'5", five five. but look at this little fun spot. And it broke my heart when um, Smith & Hawkins went out of business, because I used to love them, but now we're trying to be a little Smith and Hawkins-ish. So a lot of these things come from the store. And so that's what you can find in my store. You can find great fabrics and, you know, no nothing. This is a no nothing piece, but a really pretty vase. And this happens to have a snake on it for a platter. Just things that are unusual and collecting all of them together is what makes a home a home, I think. And so you tuck in here and have dinner or, these are all these great ideas. I've never had dinner down here. Um, but I have curled up and read a magazine when I was trying to get away from everybody. And that's kind of fun. And then when you turn around, you see the another, here's another axis, you know, you axis that you can look down and see. So when you come back out, um, there I was, you know, all spit and vinegar when I first did this. And I was telling the guys he was 
you know, moving my palm tree. No, 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 it's got to be a little bit this way. I need the shadow at, in the evening to have the palm hit the pool. And all those little details um, drive people crazy, but they really make a difference. One of the things I love about Charleston, there's so much. I came to Charleston and went to college at Charleston. And the whole reason I came here was because of the city. I had no idea of what kind of education I was going to get. I knew I wanted to be in Charleston. And downtown Charleston and the history of Charleston and the gardens and the sculpture. So this is a piece that I found on my travels buying um, in Europe. And I wanted to bring some of those collector items to Charleston, which is what I've done at my store. Um, and so we have containers coming in of things like this. And shame on me, some of them come to my house and they don't go to yours. Surely I'll run out of space at some point. I hope you've enjoyed the tour of my special place. It really is special to me. And shame on me, I don't share it very often just because it's so private and, and I am. But I'm really glad to be sharing it and I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you'll come by and see us um, at Elizabeth Stewart. And we're on Coleman Boulevard. And not just to plug that, but enjoy your garden and love your garden and let your garden love you. And there's no such thing as a horrible mistake because it's, it's where you can make mistakes and let it absorb. And just do like I do, because all my mistakes are in sort of, I have, I have a hospital area. I don't let Beth throw out anything and I can't throw out anything. I can't kill anything. So I throw it in my hospital area, it makes me feel okay. And then you try again and just enjoy it because we all need it now for sure.